Welcome back to Kitchen Isolation Chumps. Here we're doing episode two of Bad Chef, Worst Chef, and today we're gonna to be Italian stallions. I'm gonna be making a filled ravioli, a vegetarian dish, uh, using fresh pasta and a few little ingredients that I've got down here. Um, it's gonna be served with a creamy chestnut sauce. And Sam, what are you gonna be up to? I'm gonna make a really simple squid ink risotto. Let me talk to you about the kinds of rice you can buy in the supermarket. There's arborio rice, which is your run of the mill stock standard. You can get it anywhere. That's what she looks like. Uh, overcooks really, really easy, not my favorite. Then you've got Violoni Nano. Now Violoni Nano, as you can see here, is a little bit more round. Uh, it's amazing because what it does is it, it absorbs a lot, a lot of stock. So it never, ever, ever fucking overcooks. So if you're useless at cooking risotto, that's the rice you really want to go for. But if you're experienced and you want to go a little bit further with it, there's Cannaroli. Now Cannaroli is the king. It's the Rolls Royce of risotto. There is no better rice for it. All the chefs use it. And what it is, is it's just really starchy. And me personally, I like a really starchy, compact rice. That's what this gives you. And that is the best rice you can buy. Dougie, back to you, mate. What are you doing? All right, I'm going to be working today with a fresh pasta. So the first thing you have to do is make a pasta montage. talk to you about what's going to go with this pasta. I'm going to make a chestnut sauce. What you're going to do is you're going to go down to your local market and have a look for chestnuts. There's two types, big juicy ones like this and there's slightly smaller ones. You want these big ones. These have the nice creamy flesh that you're after. In order to prepare these, all you need to do is score the surface just lightly, cut a little X in it with a serrated knife and then we take this and we pop it in the oven for about 10 minutes and this is what you'll get. You'll get the skin peeling back from the flesh. And the most important thing right now is not to do too many at once. You've got to peel them while they're still hot. So if you do them 10 at a time, you've got time to peel them before the skin gets hard and it gets really hard to peel. What we end up with now is some nice juicy chestnuts like this, which we use to make this, which is a chestnut puree. Now to this chestnut puree, I add a bit of roasted garlic. I put a bit of cream in there, a pinch of salt, and some of this delicious grana padano. And whatever wine you've got left over after your drinking session last night, and a big knob of butter. All right, so I'm gonna cook that up into a sauce, meanwhile. Um, Sammy's gonna tell you how he's gonna start going about this risotto. If you come around this side, I'll show you how to make the most delicious risotto. So guys, it starts with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Extra virgin olive oil, you cook with it, okay? Italians, cook with extra virgin olive oil, or olive oil, it's totally up to you. Right, I'm gonna now go in with a little bit of onions. All right. Hear that sound? That's exactly what we're looking for. We're gonna sweat these with no color. You don't want any color. It starts to burn, it gets a little bit acrid, it gets a little bit bitter. Okay, a little pinch of salt. Very, very important, okay? A little knob of butter. Two knobs. That's gonna cook for around 10 minutes. Okay guys, so after 10 minutes, You've got this sort of translucent sort of onions happening. The <clears throat> butter's bubbling. And it's all about looking after the heat. You want that sort of medium low style of heat. Okay? Now the most important part, the toasting of the rice. The rosso of the rice as the Italians like to call it. In it goes. Alright. I'm using again cannaroli. If I can open the fucking packet. There we go. In with the rice. Okay? Now all you want to do is stir that through. Don't start adding anything to it just yet. For around two to three minutes, right, you should also have some chicken stock on the go. You want that chicken stock to be warm. Now, I like to use Riesling. A lot of people will tell you don't use Riesling, but I like a nice buttery Riesling. So today, we're going to use it. I'm not going to give a fuck what anybody says. That's what we do. In with the Riesling, just enough to top the rice. Okay, not too much, you just want it to cover the rice. Okay, and now you're gonna cook that down, and that'll go and reduce to sort of almost like a syrup. When we get to that stage, we'll continue further. So as you can see, that wine has cooked all the way down, and that's exactly what you want. You don't want any more left. You can just see 
just a little bit of it starting to thicken up on the bottom there and it's sweet and it's reduced and it's buttery and it's amazing. So now chicken stock, very, very important. Hot chicken stock in, okay? And now you're gonna do this a ladle at a time. From now, you do not stop stirring. The most important part to making the risotto is making sure that every time you put another ladle in, all stock, whatever the hell you wanna call it, is reduced down and soaked into the rice, okay? I'm gonna start on the filling for my pasta now. It's gonna be a vegetarian herb and ricotta filling. And if you come down here, I'll show you what I've got going on. If you look into the food processor here, we've got some ricotta, we've got some parmesan, and we've got these herbs. And that cooking process has really softened those herbs up, so they're gonna be nice and tender on the tongue, and nice and flavoursome as well. There we go, delicious. You know the most important thing when you're cooking stuff? Just fucking taste it. Don't just cook the thing and put it in your pasta and fucking whatever. You need to taste it every step of the way to make sure you're on the right track. You need to know whether you need to adjust your salt, your pepper, your flavor, anything like that. And you cannot tell that if you don't put some in your face hole. Okay guys, so it's been about eight minutes and you can start to see that the risotto is coming together. All right, now, this is the most important part. There's a lot of fucking important parts of it. But this for me is the most important part. So, if you don't like squid ink, I know some of you out there are probably looking and going, squid ink, squid ink. I don't like squid ink, harden the fuck up. <laughs> exactly. Grow some balls, try it, don't knock it before you try it. Okay, now, this could be anything. This could be pea puree, this could be roasted pumpkin puree. It could be anything you want. But today, it's squid ink. In that goes, all right? And now we just want to develop that flavor of the squid ink through the rice. There's something that I love about dark food. Um, I don't know, there's something sexy about that to me. Have a look at that. That is mysterious. That's got a deep, rich color. Almost there. Now you gotta work quick before your pasta dries out here. So what I'm gonna do, add this filling quickly brush it with some of my leftover egg from the pasta making process. And then, what we're gonna do, pop this on top. Hey guys, so, here we are. The next part to this, again, not a very important thing. Mascarpone cheese. Now, there's gonna be some Italians out there who are probably gonna knock me for this, but, whatever. Big, big tablespoon of mascarpone cheese. Big pinch of salt, not too much. White pepper, very important. I've got parsley. Now, you're not gonna see it, but it's not about looking at it, it's flavor. This is for fucking flavor. I'm sick of people using it as garnish over the top of shit. That is not what it's for, okay? Now, you're gonna stir that through. Right, this is the final stages. Right, you're gonna start to see the risotto slowly come together. Some Jacques scallops here. Now you can buy these, these are frozen ones. Lots of salt, lots of oil, straight on top. Right. If you don't have a flat top like this, all you need to do is put a non-stick pan on. And get a fucking non-stick pan. That's exactly what you want. Now, straight on. Hot. Now I'll put three to a serve. I've got an extra one for myself, because I'm a fat fuck. Look at that. Let them alone. Don't fucking touch them. Just leave them. Don't touch them. Cook them on one side, cook them on the other side for 30 seconds. A little bit of salt. Very, very important. Salt, 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 salt. And taste as you go. If you don't taste, how the fuck do you know what it tastes like? Alright, as you can see now, the risotto. It's come together. Look at that. It's simple. Again, off the heat now. Really important. Another fucking really important step in making risotto. Butter. In. A little more. I'm gonna put more cheese in there, but we're not cooking it anymore, so this is the final season. Okay. Now, what I like to do is I like to let the risotto relax a little bit. So the butter will gently melt in there. Helping also the cooking process slow down just a little bit. It's going to give it a much more luscious 
sort of flavour, a richer flavour, um, a better flavour. <laughs> you need to rest it for two, three minutes, I think. These scallops, if I'm still good, they'll be nice and golden brown underneath. Look at that, just a little push. You can already see they're starting to lift away. Look at that. Nice and golden. You know, if you're finding they're going to stick a little bit, kind of like that one did. I'll put a little bit more oil. And like I said here, cook with your extra virgin olive oil. There's nothing worse than letting your extra virgin olive oil sit there at home and go rancid. Because once you open the pan, that's what happens. It starts going rancid. Here we go. Gently pick that bastard up and turn it. And do the exact same thing here. Pick it up and turn it. Okay. Really, really simple. And they're about 30 seconds away from being ready. You can see. Look at that. That just falls. I'm going to show you how to play the risotto. Don't put it in a fucking bowl. It's the worst thing you can do. Risotto does not belong in a bowl. Risotto belongs on a plate, flat, like this. Get rid of that. Okay. So I'm just going to now. Put on the plate. It should be like lava. It should just float down like that. Look at that. Simple mound of it. And you just give it a shake. Look. Risotto should fall. It should be beautiful. And just, and just fall and be like silk. I'm not going to fuck around with them too much. I'm just going to do this because... Mm. Seriously. Mm. Straight on top. And look at that. That. That's a two-hat meal, guys. Mm. Simple, fresh, amazing, and me personally, I think that's sexy. Dougie, what are you doing, mate? Ladies and gentlemen, we're cooking off. Our little ravioli is now that they're shaped and cut. And while they're simmering in there, we're going to finish off our sauce. It's right here. It's basically a cream sauce with a chestnut base, a little bit of roasted garlic, a little bit of parmesan, and a little bit of white wine. Actually, quite a lot of white wine. All the white wine that I didn't put in me. Let's have a little tasty, tasty. See how she's going. Hmm, that's not bad. That's actually pretty much exactly where we want to be with that. So all I'm going to do now is just cook these ravioli off. They're going to start to come up a little bit as they cook because the density changes. As you can see, it's starting to float now. And when they're done, I'll pull them out and start my plate up. Dougie, for someone who's not a fucking Italian, that yeah. blue. But I am a stallion. There you go. That's all you got to be, a fucking stallion. All right, so what we're going to do, is get a couple of these little baby leaves. What you want is a nice little tender one from the inside like this, just to garnish the top of it. I'm going to take this, I'm going to take this. No tweezers here, guys. No tweezers, none at all. That's going to be our little garnish for it. I'm going to put a little bit of this sauce on top. cheese because that is what we love. Now, okay. here we go ladies and gentlemen. Time to taste. Time to taste. Now this is the best part of the day. This is where we stick our hard earned food and stuff right into our frontal face holes and see how it turned out. Nah. Deep, dark, rich, sexy. I'll tell you what, the Italians, they really know how to fucking cook. No, I do. But you know who else know how to cook? Mm. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in to Italian Sessions with Bad Chef, Worst Chef. I'll leave it up to you to decide who's bad and who's worse. Don't forget, like, subscribe, Bad Chef, Worst Chef.